I'm back with another video. Today we have the seven sinful versus the seven heavenly streamers. Age restricted. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. There's seven specific streamers who perfectly embody the seven deadly sins. However, if we flip these upside down, we'll find another set of streamers who represent the exact opposite. The seven heavenly virtues. My name's Ryan, and we'll be comparing the streamers who embody the seven deadly sins and their corresponding heavenly virtues, starting with gluttony versus temperance. Most people associate the sin of gluttony with eating copious amounts of food for pleasure, but it also represents an uncontrolled overindulgence in anything, such as alcohol, money, or even online clout. No other streamer best represents gluttony than Aiden Ross. With his drug addiction, alcohol- I'm sorry, we cannot let you off. We have to make an example out of you. See the sin of gluttony with eating copious amounts- Nick Avocado Avocado. Well, you couldn't have been no guest of mine. So let's say if someone I knew was bringing you along for the ride, you enter my domain, infinite domain. We got to put some plastic down for you. You look like you stink. You fit within this archetype. I know I'm correct. I scant you already. I already know what you wish. You, I know you, you look like you got swamp ass 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Even if you want to go off the Mayan calendar and add a day. He, he do so we got to put some and yes I have a problem with this <sighs> gluttony I mean it is poison you're consuming FDA approved poison standardized American diet that's killing you there's some kids all across the world that's starving they just want three of them noodles and you got the nerve to be eating for eight linebackers. When you go to hell, what you was doing here on earth, you was eating, they're gonna make you eat until your stomach explodes, it's gonna sew back up, and then you got you're gonna have to, that sound like the perfect hell for you guys. But let's continue to food for pleasure, but it also represents an uncontrolled overindulgence in anything, such as alcohol, money, or even online clout. No other streamer best represents he just remind me i think all i think y'all doing the same thing you know the guy that went viral on twitter putting a gas pump in his ass early in the morning you already know what was his genetic composition you know what settings he was born with he looked like he doing the same thing like you couldn't even take a shower in my, i think the shower is contaminated Sense gluttony than Aiden Ross, with his drug addiction, alcohol consumption, and unsavory acts with OnlyFans models on stream, Aiden is constantly in pursuit for pleasure. On the flip side, Nick 30 is a living embodiment of temperance, which is described as emotional restraint or self-control. Both are massively successful streamers, yet their behavior can't be any different. On most days, Aiden is either high on weed, drunk with alcohol, or sometimes even hooked on harder drugs like cocaine. <laughs> After meeting Andrew Tate in December of 2022, and getting inspired by his discipline, Aiden promised to turn his life around and abandon his unhealthy lifestyle. Because just a couple of months prior to meeting him, Aiden genuinely felt lost in the world of streaming, so much so that he contemplated abandoning his career altogether. But Tate became Aiden's reason to keep pushing on, gradually progressing into a mentor figure for him. Andrew! I love you. I mean, like, I love you. I love him, bro. I love him with all my heart. I missed you. You got bigger and you got stronger and, and also sexier. Everyone thought this was finally the time Aiden would change his ways. Unfortunately, this mindset only lasted a short while and Aiden regressed back to his old habits of drinking. Aiden, you calling a grown ass man sexy. I see why your girl left you. I, I see why. Just know. and drug abuse. This was a massive disappointment to all of his fans who wanted to see Aiden live a better life. Aiden never fails to disappoint. Aiden is the best example of what you don't want to be in life. He's perfect for that. It's good that he exists so he can be set up as an example to show kids what you're not supposed to be in life. Even Andrew Tate himself called out Aiden on his lack of determination during a joint livestream. I think you hold the record for making the most stupid life choice 
I have, me personally, Top G, ever been witness to hearing. <laughs> ever. Wait. Nobody ever. on earth, nobody has told me a more stupid decision. I decided to stop going to the gym so I could focus on consuming liquid heroin. You are an idiot, Aiden. In comparison though, Nick 30 has always lived a healthy lifestyle that has inspired others to do better as well. For starters, he only eats homemade food in moderate proportions. This includes things like high protein chicken with vitamin rich spaghetti squash, vegetable filled Vietnamese rice rolls, and even a birthday cake topped with healthy fruits. Nick also works out on a regular basis and has a pretty impressive physique to show for it. So it's quite clear that he's a beacon of positivity for his audience and the online gaming community in general. There are also dozens of clips of him inspiring his viewers through encouraging words. So never back down, never what? Never give up. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Let's go. Nick is a real one for this. Who knows, that kid might have not had any parents or anyone to turn to for support. And Nick might have changed his life around. Thanks, Nick. But that's not all. Another way Nick embodies temperance and restraint is with his attitude towards money. Despite having millions of viewers, he never flexes his wealth and chooses to live with his parents instead of some dripped out mansion down in LA. This again is arguably the complete opposite of Aiden, who has zero issues flaunting his money to his viewers. I have 700,000 in cash right there. I got $700,000 in cash right there. And instead of spreading positivity like Nick, Aiden went down a degenerate path after his breakup with his girlfriend, Pammy. He began inviting OnlyFans models and adult film stars on streams with his content often looking like this. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. This relentless pursuit of pleasure has already left Aiden's content off limits for most of his younger fans, and it's not hard to imagine his growth completely halting in the near future. On the other hand, Nick A30's positive attitude not only makes him a role model, but also proves fame can be earned without comp- I'm sorry, I gotta say it. I, I gotta- I, I've seen her somewhere. I've seen her somewhere. Before she got there to your stream, she probably just sucked the BBC and she just, you just kissed her. Let's continue, man. Compromising morals. Speaking of which, there are only a handful of streamers who radiate tolerance and joy in the face of intense bullying like our next streamer. Patience is the ability to continue doing something despite setbacks or difficulties, or to suffer without complaining. And this streamer Keiso exemplifies this trait better than anyone. Keiso is one of the biggest streamers on Twitch, and while many people may not believe he embodies patience at first glance, There's a reason for that. He's an overweight guy and his chat is constantly making fun of his weight on every opportunity. What do you mean bros built like a one by one Lego piece? What even is a one by one Lego piece? Yep, you're banned. <laughs> Have a good night. Imagine being a... <laughs> oh man, what the fuck? He said, yeah, you're banned. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? He said, yeah. You're a man. <laughs> a one by one Lego beef. <laughs> yep, you're banned. Have a good night. Imagine being the biggest living creature on the earth. You don't have to imagine it sadly. Yeah, you're banned. <laughs> this often takes him off, resulting in him expressing anger and quote banning the person who made the joke. But that's just it. It's all just a play, an act. Everything from his loud voice to animated expressions are all a part of his streaming persona. This was perfectly explained by his viewers when someone asked in Keso's subreddit reading, does Keso actually ban people when he says it? To which someone replied, no, it's just a joke lol. Another comment further clarified the situation. He only bans people when they say racist, sexist, or really offensive things, or when they straight up become a problem. Most of it is just for laughs. So despite being provoked by his chat so often, and enduring constant- Hey. You are pink. But you are you alright with me, man. You alright with me. Shout out to him. What's his name again?
and fat shaming, he remains patient and lets his audience have their fun. Sure, he acts as though he's actually angry, but it's clear this show of anger is just to keep things entertaining. However, this behavior is in stark contrast with FuzzyTube, a popular YouTuber and streamer whose career suffered from his intense anger issues. Fuzzy is one of the OGs of online content creation, who is known for his once popular public prank and social experiment videos. However, as the popularity of such content diminished, so did his mental stability. In 2017, he decided to take a year-long break and, upon returning, announced a fan meetup event that, in his own words, would rival Coachella. Unfortunately, this event turned disastrous when none of the promised artists made it to the event. And to make matters even worse, someone called in a bomb threat, causing the whole event to be cancelled. This led to Fousey's public breakdown in front of his fans. Fousey is the biggest piece of shit egotistical asshole on this earth! I have bipolar and depression! That what you put into my head made me want to kill myself! While many people meme this meltdown to hell and back. I'm crying right now because I'm in fear. <laughs> Others expressed genuine concern for his well-being. This actually made me genuinely concerned for his mental health. I hope he has good friends around him that prioritize his well-being over making money. Following this, Fuzi stepped into the world of IRL streaming and vowed to broadcast every waking hour of his life. And while this was going well in the beginning, things started to once again break down as time went on, with Fuzi having more and more mental breakdowns during his streams. In one instance, he even physically lashed out at another streamer. His situation reached a critical point when, after receiving death threats, he called 911 in distress, claiming someone had a gun to his head. Send the cops! There's a gun to my head right now! There's a gun to my head! Help! Ma'am! 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 He left! Ma'am! He left! There's a gun to my head! Help! Help! Get them! Help! Bye! And when cops arrived, Fuzi started yelling at them instead of clearly explaining his situation. I have his address! I said grab my security 20 minutes ago! His last- I'm sorry, at that point, if I'm the police officer, I'm Alonzo Harris, a dirty cop, and I'm whooping your ass, I'm shooting you with the taser, and and I'm a yell, stop resisting, stop resisting, I'm going upside your head with the, with the billy club like CJ from San Andreas with the dildo, that's what, you yelling at me. Like, who is you yelling at? And you were courting too, like. I'm one of them, I'm abusing my authority. Stop resisting. Lack of cooperation and erratic behavior led to the cops arresting him instead. You guys are dumb as fuck, man. You guys are literally dumb as fuck. Oh, hey, record this, security! Come in here now! In contrast to Queso's controlled reactions, Fuzi's inability to manage his anger and pride led to severe consequences, which ultimately impacted both his career and personal life. Though, if we're going to talk about being prideful, there's no streamer more fitting than Jack Doherty. The sin of pride is defined as an excessive love of one's own excellence. While having self-respect is important, thinking too highly of yourself can give you an arrogant and unlikable personality, which in many people's eyes is exactly what happened to Jack Doherty. On the flip side, Jinx is a living example of humility, which is the heavenly virtue of staying humble regardless of your position in life. They're both massively successful young streamers, so what makes them so polar opposite in their approach to fame and influence? For Jack, the answer might lie in the fact that he's basically grown up on the internet. Jack began his online career on YouTube 7 years ago when he was just 13 years old. His channel blew up from the get-go, with one of his earlier videos receiving over 3.4 million views to date. This early excess likely had a negative effect on the young boy's impressionable mind as he began chasing success and money at expense of those around him. Jack went from doing harmless and innocent pranks like trick-or-treating the day after Halloween to harassing people in public for views. He kept pushing boundaries, going as far Doherty, that was some dork ass shit, that was corny. And if your bald African buddy would have got in front of me, I'd have whooped his ass and sent him back to, to the 
the Congolese, Congolese, I'd have sent you right back, packing. How you gonna let this, how you gonna let this disproportionate Jimmy Hopkins get in my face? And then when I, what's, what's up? You gonna, I'd have whooped his ass. I ain't gonna lie, straight up. Let's continue. Or is doxing a Walmart employee for kicking him out after Jack trashed the store? Put a picture on the screen right here. His name is Donato. To make matters worse, Jack also started bragging about his success and flexing his wealth on Twitter. This not only made him more unlikable, but also negatively impacted the reception of his content. The thing that makes Jack so obnoxious is that he has literally no redeeming qualities. Everything he does is either annoying or bragging. There is no respect or anything. If you asked AI to create the world's most punchable face, it would spit out this kid Jack. By comparison, the public has a much more favorable view of Jinxie thanks to his down-to-earth personality. Jinxie began his career as an energetic Rainbow Six Siege player streaming on Twitch back in 2019, but his streaming career finally began to take off when he started posting clips of his streams on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. His high-octane personality immediately caught the viewers' attention and received millions of views. Jinxie also went from 13,000 live viewers in 2023, which was already quite impressive, to over 200,000 in 2024. Not only that, he even became the most subscribed channel on Twitch, surpassing the likes of XQC and Kai Sanat. But despite reaching the top of the streaming world, Jinxie didn't become pretentious like Jack. He remained grounded and humble, and when asked about his enormous accomplishment, this is all he had to say. Are you officially the number one streamer on Twitch? Right now, in the last like two months, yeah. That's f crazy. How does that feel? I mean, no different That's than pretty being- pretty humble, bro. No different than being number two or number three, it's just like- No, it's not. It's completely different. Dude, I still- wake up in the same bed like it, i don't know nothing changes after that as a comment on one of his videos pointed out much respect for this kid having money and not letting it change his life even when jinxie bought a new car he didn't make a show of it online he also chose a practical honda instead of a flashy sports car like any other streamer in his position to celebrate he only made a simple post showing his gratitude to his viewers for the support this, unsurprisingly, is the polar opposite of Jack Doherty, who loves bragging about his Lamborghini purchases, and it's easy to see why. Because unlike Jack, Jinxie is not doing this to get filthy rich and famous. Instead, his main priority is his family, and the time he gets to spend with them. To me, family is all you really have in yeah. life. Like, you can have, you can have, like, money or fame or whatever, but at the end of the day, all that really matters is, like, the people you truly care about. So, like, dude, I'm 22, bro. Like, I have my whole... I have my whole life to go f off and live by myself. I may as well spend as much time with my mom and dad while I can. This split in priorities is also right. the main difference between them. While Jack Doherty's pride in his wealth and fame will keep forcing him to cross any line for more views, Jinxie's humility and kindness allows him to keep doing his best to support his family and grow his business. However, if we're mentioning kindness, we can't forget the undisputed king of compassion and warm interaction with his fans. Kindness is the quality of being friendly and caring towards others, and Kaisenet expresses this trait every chance he gets, especially when he's out interacting with his fans. Not so long ago, Kai was the biggest streamer on Twitch with over 306,000 active subscribers. Yet despite his monumental success, he's always been down to earth when talking to his fans. Like the time he met a passionate fan in Nigeria, Kai not only listened to his troubles, but also promised him a new PC to help kickstart his streaming career. You don't gotta cry, bro! I'm an aspiring streamer. I need a PC so I can start streaming, bro. Oh, you want a, you want a PC? Yeah, I want to stream, bro. I know, I know, but damn, don't cry. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see you again. I'll be out here. Text me on Instagram. I already did 200 times. <laughs> okay, 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 so what's your Instagram? Okay, I'm gonna text you right now. I got, I promise, I promise. I got you, bro, I promise. He also had a similar interaction with another super fan in Las Vegas. Yeah, you're getting a PC, buddy. You're definitely getting a PC, bro. W. Kai, out here changing lives. And while majority of the time it's Kai giving away free stuff, sometimes it's his loyal fans that return the favor. What's up? I have something for you. This is by 2006. Kobe in Taiwan. Wait, what? Yeah, give me a ball. Kobe gave you this. Damn, you want me to have it? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you. But there's another side to Kai's kindness, and that's his ability to connect with others and build relations. Shout out to Kai for giving the, uh, um, what well, he gave two PCs. He probably did more than that. That's just what he put in the video. Because if them two people make something other, it's like, okay, how can I paint this image metaphorically or whatever? Okay, let's say Kai is the light in the room and everybody else. Everybody else light is turned off like they're black and they're walking and he's a light. It's like he tags someone else now. It's up to you 
if them people he gifted the PCs to, if they make something of themselves, then they can tag other people. Like they light will be turned on, they can tag other people, and they light will turn on as well. Rather that's you inspiring someone, like directing them to their own individual light, like nah, you can do this too. Or it can be on the financial end as well. Like what is both of them guys with a PC, they can become something to where they can move their family and the whatever. Whatever, like he can help them out and then Y'all get what I'm saying. Like, so. Yeah, that's, that's dope. Let's continue. Relationships. And the clearest example of this is his relationship with Ray. Kai first met Ray when he visited Japan in July of 2023. Ray recognized Kai streaming outside and came up to meet him with enthusiasm. And Kai responded with an equal amount of joy on his face. Yo! What's good, bro? It's my dream. It's a dream? Yeah! <laughs> My boy! I love you, bitch! Kai! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! I love you, bro! Kai quickly realized that Ray was on the same wavelength as him. This led him to inviting Ray to America for two weeks, and the two had a blast. They filmed a short surprise, film right? together, inspired by Rush Hour called Global Pursuit. He pranked Ray on stream. He, he just hit for America for the first time, so he told So you're actually the fifth girl that you speak to. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah! So you good, like, yeah. Yeah. All right, Ray, start talking. Why are you looking? What? 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 Kai's viewers also love their interaction, with memes like these getting tens of thousands of views and likes. And to think that this friendship started from a simple interaction just because Kai decided to show kindness to a passionate fan is pretty cool to think about. But where some people love to uplift others, there are those who do anything to tear them down. This behavior perfectly sums up the disrespectful online persona and envious nature of Neon. The sin of envy is the act of showing bitterness or sadness and another's good fortune or excellence in wanting it for one's own self but never feeling satisfied. This definition perfectly summarizes Neon's whole career, as almost everything he said or done was for the sole purpose of going viral and joining the big leagues of the streaming world without having to put in the required legwork. His stunts range from launching a barrage of insults at a plus size content creator on a live stream. To screaming like a maniac on a stream with Andrew Tate. And faking his own death for cloud by claiming that he had a brain tumor. I think Neon has done more than enough to make people hate him forever. Recently, he even got arrested for illegally filming female cops in Dubai. However, his career took a turning point in April of 2024 when Neon was banned for reckless driving during a live stream. It's evident that Neon has and will continue to do these insufferable acts to stay relevant as the creator he envies. On the other hand, Kai's kind persona and heart of gold would continue to earn him loyal fans like Rey. However, it can be argued that even the worst of Neon's antics are nothing compared to that of Riot Law, who is the personification of lust. Lust is a sin for someone who often suffers from strong cravings or desires, often of sexual nature. Riot Law exemplifies this by streaming himself on Omegle, where he often attempts to convince women into engaging in sexual activities or revealing themselves in explicit ways. To be honest, can you just like, okay, when you start up i was really only looking at one thing to be honest uh can you just like show me for those unaware omegle is a site where you can anonymously video chat with other people and riot law uses a platform to find the next victim of his quote-unquote content most of his streams follow a similar format he connects with girls on omegle talks with them a little and tries to steer the conversation to where he can get them to expose themselves on stream however that's not everything because a couple months prior a youtuber by the name of something about chickens made an expose video on riot law in which he showed evidence of riot soliciting the same responses from minors. This is Riot LOL. Oh I've seen this video too. I've reacted to it. Mar is his real name. He's a 20-year-old kick streamer, TikToker, 
Twitter slash X user, whatever you want to call it. And here's him about to get a girl that's clearly, let's say, not of age to expose herself live on his stream. And I didn't spend a single pay. Oh my. Oh my god, my two like out. What the hell? Yeah, like, I mean, like, why are they not more out is a real question. I mean, like, what time is it? You know, it's already demon hours. Kid. Wait, listen, how old are you? I'm 19. Oh, I'm 16. <laughs> you said 18? Yeah. On one instance, Wright even made some suggestive remarks for a literal baby. Oh my, what's your name? Hey, listen, you're really pretty, but can I talk to the one in the middle? <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. Now, I had to blur out who Riot was actually talking about because it was a baby. This kind of behavior isn't just immoral, it's straight up evil. Not to mention how this is also the exact opposite of Ludwig, who is a strong follower of chastity. For Ludwig, chastity... This guy, he looked like he catched the pig whole and just started eating it. That's what he looked like. I'm, he, he looked like he eat nothing but ham sandwiches. Like, this dude ugly as hell. He can be defined as the virtue of complete fidelity to a partner, as he's been loyal to his girlfriend QT Cinderella for over four years now. It was in May of 2020 when Ludwig revealed his relationship to the world on Twitter, and the couple began appearing more and more in each other's streams. <gasps> <laughs> Since then, they've collaborated on several massive projects like the Streamer Awards and the chess boxing event. It's clear that both have helped each other grow their audience considerably, though their relationship is also an inspiration for their viewers, showcasing what a healthier and pure relationship looks like. If I don't have a relationship like theirs, I don't want it. Lud and QT are the relationship everyone dreams of having. Over four years later, Ludwig's relationship with QT is as strong as ever, serving as a clear example of chastity and loyalty for their fans. On the contrary, while Riot Law has since been banned from Kick, no one will likely surpass the lust and desire in his content. With that said, shout out to Buddy for having a loyal one. It looked like you still ugly as hell though. Not all streamers share the same values. Some are driven by greed and solely focus on making money. Put simply, greed is the desire to gain as much material wealth as possible. A streamer by the name of Bad Bunny became the symbol of greed when she got angry at her viewers for not all making right, yeah. any donations on multiple occasions. Five dollars a month! How are you have hours of time to watch me and not five dollars? I don't know, what are you doing with your life where you have hours of time to watch Twitch and not five dollars to provide for the content that you're watching? Because it's like people just really have no, they really don't respect me as a content creator. Chat, I haven't got a donation or a sub for an hour. What the f For an hour? What the f An hour when I am working for free? What the f This immediately blew up. If it was me, Bitch, I, I might want to get some bags of chips and some some little debbies with that five dollars, and and it's it serves more use. I'm not wasting my money on you. Her ass literally pink. I'm not wasting my money on you. I don't blame them. They probably got another streamer they watched too, and they didn't gave the five dollars to them already. Yo, entitled ass. It's always pink people, man. Let's continue. Up across the internet, and people saw her as nothing more than greedy and entitled. She's moaning about people not having $5 while she is begging for $5. She's basically saying, you don't have a life. Now give me money. Penguin Sierra's opinion on the situation also matched most of the existing criticism online. But yeah, this narcissist is probably the greediest person on Twitch. She's like the Mr. Krabs of streaming, but not nearly as cool as Mr. Krabs because she has a shitty personality, a horrible attitude, and the worst perspective on things on that entire platform. But another streamer jumped in and said this. And the reason why this is getting retweeted and liked so much is because she's an attractive woman who didn't act like a nice person which is what makes frust simply frustrated incels angry basically claiming that all of the backlash was from incels though charlie quickly shot down his argument as well yeah this hero decides to make it an issue about her being a woman despite the fact that that is irrelevant to why people don't like it it's because people don't like someone that says shit like that and it is that greedy and that disrespectful and that entitled. It has nothing to do with her being a woman. It's clear that Bad Bunny's greed for money rubbed off wrong on a lot of people. He said 
Then that guy say uh, attract to each his own. To me, you not attractive. You couldn't even suck my dick. You can't. You cannot. You look like you you a biter and everything. Like you you couldn't. To each his own though. Some guys out there like fucking tables, flat ass, literally a canvas. You, you can hang you can hang something up on that ass. Like it's it's nothing there. Some guy I don't understand it. Therefore I stand under it. Rightfully so. So. She ain't cute to me. Oh, but not every streamer is like her. Because some streamers like Jacksepticeye are the beacons of charity. Charity is about selflessly aiding others and helping make the world a better place for everyone, even at the expense of personal self. And Jack fits this description perfectly. The most notable of his contributions come from his yearly thank him streams which started back in 2017. The idea behind these charity streams was quite straightforward. The whole idea behind thank him is to engage so many different creators, so many different people, so many different types of communities to make as much real world impact as we can with the resources that we have. And it caught on quickly with the first thank him stream raising over $346,000 for Save the Children. Since then, Jack has organized over 28 different charity events including ones for Black Lives Matter, Team Trees, and World Central Kitchen. In total, congrats to this guy, whatever his name is again. Black Lives Matter, it's a scam. And I'm not black, that's void of color, it's lifeless, dead on the waters of this corporation America. Black Laws Dictionary, and it throws you underneath the bus in a jujitsu system. And I'm not African American, that's two continents. The top of this mic is black. Look at me, I'm closer to this color or gold. Pick one. After all, I am part of the golden race for sure. I'm God's man, you regular man, we ain't the same. But um, yeah, Black Lives Matter is a scam. Funded by what, George Soros? It's a scam. Black lives don't matter. If you identify as black, you're already saying it don't matter. It works against you. But um, I believe in charity. But I gotta see it myself. I gotta see the people like how Kai gave them a PC so they can become a light or better analogy or whatever. Let's say he's already on a cliff, which he is. He can help someone else up on a cliff and then someone else can help someone else up on a cliff. Each one re teach one. That kind of thing. Like he already looked in the mirror and made sure he's straight. So he good start in the mirror with yourself because that's all you can do. And then outside of yourself is your household and you will be helping everyone else out invertly and directly. So, yeah, I, I got to see the charity. Like, I got to be hands on out and about and seeing. Like, I don't believe in donating and it's on some big ass poster card and it's allegedly going to. I don't know that everything is a scam where there's power. There is corruption. We don't know somebody probably at least pocket a portion of it or something. I don't believe it. I don't. I never have and I never will. I will never be one to hold up a postcard and no, I got to be hands on out and about. Or if I can't do it, if I can't make it there for that particular time and moment, send my guys out there to put the work in, to do it, to touch the people, to reach the people. I'm not, I don't get that. I don't, I'm, I feel like this is some of the biggest scamming in the world, close to, close to church. But let's continue. Well, Jacksepticeye's raised and donated over $26 million to charities across the globe. What makes Jack's charitable efforts even greater is that he never brags about them or presents himself as some kind of savior. Instead, he thanks everyone else for their support. I think we should be thanking all the people at home too, who stay up late, who watch every single year, who stay for the entire stream, or even if you just come in for five minutes, donate and leave, it all makes such a massive difference to everything we're doing. So, while greedy streamers like Bad Bunny are ridiculed and then forgotten by the masses, Jack's humble yet diligent nature is the reason his charity streams will continue to do good for the world. Coincidentally though, diligence and hard work are also the reasons why so many people love Shroud, and also why many have an issue with XQC's lazy reaction content. XQC is one of the most well-known streamers in the world, and rightfully so. He's been streaming for over 8 years now, and once held the title as the most subscribed streamer on Twitch with over 102,000 active subscribers. He was originally an esports streamer who played Overwatch professionally, but as his popularity grew, his content streams went from this... ...to this... Right about here... In Dallas, Texas, American President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. 
on November the 22nd, 1963. Energetic gameplay to silent reactions. Many viewers saw these empty reactions from XQC as nothing but pure sloth, which is a sin of not wanting to work because of laziness and lack of motivation. In other words, people saw this type of content as sluggish and many people called him out on this behavior. The problem is that he played something that someone worked really hard on in its almost entirety on stream with zero commentary in the middle and poked fun of it at the end after the video was done. Reactions are only fine in terms of copyright because they are transformative. You didn't do anything transformative. You took potential views from the guy and now you're mad that people are rightfully upset at your actions? Learn to understand that you did wrong and apologize for the incident and learn from it. This isn't it chief. Put simply, as XQC's fame grew, his passion and interest towards producing better content diminished, which is the complete opposite of the streamer's shroud. Who is the best examples of diligence? The quality of applying steady, earnest, and energetic effort to the task at hand. Shroud first found success as one of the best pro players for Counter-Strike. Eventually, he moved away from esports and began streaming a variety of games on Twitch, and that's when his true nature became apparent. Put simply, Shroud is a hard worker. Whenever he picks up a new game, he dedicates time and effort until he becomes one of the best players in that game. And it's Shroud's diligence to his craft that will keep his viewers coming back for more. <laughs> Who else play um, Rainbow Six and killed their own team? <laughs> I know everybody at least did that once. I know you have. Nah, that game crazy. Well, XQC would keep getting labeled as a content thief by the internet if he continues in his slothful ways. Try to try to skip. These are seven specific YouTubers who perfectly represent the seven heavenly. Well, that's it for this video. Let me go back so you see the title. There's seven specific. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Comment, share, subscribe. Turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. I'll see y'all in the next video. Us versus them. I'm out.